Mariner B spacecraft was boosted. The Mariner B spacecraft was boosted into space by an Atlas missile with a Centaur second stage at 6.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, January 10th, the capsule was successfully dropped on the surface of the planet Mars. The capsule discharged a robot device which succeeded in moving across the surface of the planet for a distance of 372 yards. This device collected soil samples and telemetered its findings to receiving stations on Earth. At 6.21 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, transmission ceased. Whether this was due to mechanical breakdown or conditions encountered on Mars hasn't been determined. That'll be all. Give it to public information. And Ms. Moore, Yes, sir. Try my call to California. Yes, sir. I thought you'd gone home. Pretty soon. Well, the reporters have been out there all night. They're going to want to talk to you. Well, that's all the authority wants to release right now. Until we've had a chance to analyze the findings. Well, the authorities better tell that to the papers. It's worth your life getting in and out of here. Of course, it isn't every day we make a successful landing on Mars. I wouldn't say it was so successful, Webb. No, you wouldn't. But when you stop to think that the first time in the... I had your California call, Dr. Fielding. Say hello to Claire for me. I'll get us some coffee. Mrs. Fielding's on the line, Doctor. Dr. Fielding. Is anything wrong, Dave? What's the matter? Hmm? Oh. Dr. Fielding. Just tired, I guess. Dr. Fielding. You guess. Hello? Claire? Claire? This is Dave. Oh, just a minute, dear. I turned the radio on for the news and went to sleep. Was it all right? We made the landing. The robot transmitted for about six minutes before it went dead. That's good. Sorry I woke you up. It's quarter to five Beverly Hills time. Are you coming home? Just as soon as I can wind up my reports. Is it Daddy? Hold on. I thought I was being so quiet. You know how you sleep. It rang for hours. Well, as long as you're up, you better go get Rocky. He'd never forgive us. It's Judy. Well, put her on. She's gone to wake Rocky. They'll be on the other phone in a minute. You didn't tell her? No, not yet. I didn't think it was the right time. Dad, give me that. I was up first. Now listen, you two in there. It's Judy's turn first. Hi, Dad. Did you get to Mars? Why, sure we did, honey. You know the fieldings. How's it feel to be a hero? Tired. But it's sure good to hear your voice. Good to hear yours. Let me talk to him. Bye, Dad. Bye, honey. I knew you'd make it. I bet you they're all talking about you now. Even the president. Well, uh, I did have a little help. The Christmas tree's still up. They wanted to take it down, but I didn't let them. All your presents are under it. Oh, that's great, Rocky. You want to talk to Mother now? Sure, put her on. Dave. Is the tree really still up? Yes. Rocky wouldn't let us take it down. Oh, that's great. We can have a second Christmas. And a second New Year's? Sure, a second New Year's, too. When will all these festivities begin? Well, tomorrow, if I can get a plane out in the morning. David, I don't want you to come home just because we... Claire, I want to come home. Then you let me know? Sure, I'll let you know. Tell the kids. I will. Goodbye. Bye, dear. When's he coming home? Tomorrow, if he can get away. I'm gonna go get dressed. You're going right back to bed. It isn't even five o'clock in the morning. Okay, but I won't go to sleep. 
Mom, I know how you feel. But don't spoil it when he comes home. She's got a right to be sore. It's been like this for quite some time, and she knows it isn't going to get any better. Yeah, it's like being an army wife. Either they get used to it, or they go out of their minds. Claire's held up this long. She'll be all right. I'm not so sure, Webb. You know, Dave, Mars has been around for a few years. Why don't you take some of that leave you've been stacking up? A few days home would help. I'll think it over, Jeff. Yeah, you do that. If you're going to get a plane out here tomorrow, we've got some work to do. Are you ready to uh, meet the press? You mean they're still out there? Oh, yes. They, they just want to know, is there life on Mars? Well, I sure got a good answer for that one. Oh, sure you have. Like, nobody knows. <laughs> Mr. Galloway's on vacation. I'll press the button. No, I'll get it. Where are we camping? In the small guest house up by the tennis courts. Aunt Francis left it furnished. Take it down. I know. You told me. We'll be picking up needles for months. Well, I, uh, I'll put these away if you tell me where our room is. Your room is down at the end of the hall. I thought you'd be bringing a lot of work home with you. You really mean this, don't you, Claire? This isn't temporary. We had to have a place to stay when we sold our house. We sold our house because you were coming to Florida so we could all be together.
How together would that be, David? Claire, what do you want me to do? I don't have the kind of a job I can just quit. They consider me some sort of a natural resource for the time being. I know you can't quit your job. I wouldn't ask you to do that. But you're telling me I can't have both. I'm not trying to tell you anything right now, David. Oh, I didn't want this to happen when you first came home. Then why did you bring me here? You know how I feel about the Wainwrights? You won't even see a Wainwright unless you consider me one. We settled that a long time ago. Let's not go into it again. I know. I'm sorry, Claire. I'm sorry. Aunt Frances wanted somebody connected with the family to stay here on the estate while they tried to sell it. She asked me to do it as a favor. So you still aren't accepting anything from the Wainwrights. And uh, if it hadn't been for that, you would have come to Florida? I'll put my things away. I'll do it, Dave. No, it's all right, Claire.
Sure good to see you, too. We wanted to stay out of school, but Mom wouldn't let us. I'd like you to meet Frank. Frank Hazard, Daddy. Oh, yes, Frank Hazard. How are you, Frank? Very well, sir. I'm surprised you were able to get away, sir, after yesterday. Well, uh, you're not alone. Well, shall we go in? Come on. Rocky, that Christmas tree looks great. Swell, Dad. Hope you like your present. I like it. You can bet on that. Hey, Dad, is there really life on Mars? Well, we don't know yet, Rocky. I thought you were going to find out. <laughs> we tried, but the Martians wouldn't cooperate. Come on, let's open up your present. Oh, I think we should wait for your mother. She's up in the garden. She'll be right back. Here I am. Very proud to have met you, sir. Oh, same here, same here. Hope to see you again. Yes, sir. Shall I uh, pick you up at 7? Mm -hmm. What was that you said about the garden? Didn't you see me? I hollered. You looked right at me. Up in the French garden. David, I haven't been out of the house since you left. Come on, the tree's lighted. Same Frank I met last time? No, it wasn't. This is Frank Hazard. That was Frank Nicholas. Holly, oh, Judy's boyfriend was named Frank. <laughs> He's really a very nice boy. And you two stop teasing Judy and you open your present. He's a bacteriology major at USC. Oh, Come on, Dad. Fine. I wonder what this could be. Sure. A big box. A sleeping bag. Now you don't have any excuse not to take me to the Sierra's. Well, we were just up there last year. It was four years ago, Daddy. Yeah, four years ago. Four. We used to go all the time. Looks like you're all ganging up on me. Go on, open the rest of your presents. To Daddy would love Judy. Awfully thin. Could be a pressed duck. It is not a pressed duck. Open it. Hey, 5-2, the news. They said your name on the car radio. giveaway prices. And now, five minutes of news headlines before the hour for busy people in a busy world. In Sacramento today, the governor announced that he would submit the new state aid measure to the voters in the April primaries. The governor's bill was dramatically voted down yesterday in the legislature. No further word was heard today from Cape Canaveral regarding findings in yesterday's sensational Mars shot. The question asked by hundreds of newsmen, is there life on Mars, brought only a brisk no comment. Meanwhile, Dr. David Fielding, the man responsible for the first instrument landing on Mars, remained unavailable for interviews. Next, today's baseball score. Turn it off, will you, Rocky? In the National League, only They didn't even mention you'd left Florida. Does that mean you have to go right back? Oh, not necessarily. Schubert Sonata in D-flat major. The first new record I've had in a long time. Thanks, honey. Will you put it on for me? Which reminds me, if we're gonna eat, I better put the roast up. You stay right there until I finish opening my packages. Now, let's see what you bought me. All right. But when you get hungry, remember, it was your idea. And that isn't a press duck. And it's not a sleeping bag, either. All right, I'll get it. Hi. Hi. I thought you got lost. Good evening, Mrs. Fielding. Evening, Frank. Are you sure you don't want me to help? No, thanks, dear. I'll just put the dishes in the dishwasher. But don't forget to leave the number where you'll be. We'll be at Dr. White's home. Did you tell your father? You know, Daddy, the science he thinks is the greatest. I think he's taking a nap. The only sleep he's had was on the plane. There's a telephone number, Mrs. Fielding. We won't be late. Night. Bye. What's this seminar about? Enzyme induction in E. coli. Oh. <gasps> oh. You 
You made me jump. I didn't know you were there. The door to the big house is open. I thought you were in your room studying. I took a walk down to the gate. The door's wide open, but nobody's there. Are you sure? I know I locked it yesterday. Glad when Mr. Galloway gets back Monday. I'll go down and lock it. You tell your father I'll be back in a minute. Did you hear me? I'll go with you. You stay here, dear, and get your studying done. I'll be right back. Studying. I've been studying. Ooh. Say, Dad, why don't we take a pack trip? Good idea. We'll talk about it tomorrow. That means never. I promise. But first, finish your study. Okay. Mr. Galloway, is that you?
What's the matter, Claire? Tell me what happened. Someone followed me. Rocky told me the door of the big house was open. I went down to lock it. Somebody followed me back, then... You were standing there by the pool. But honey, I, I haven't been near the pool. But I saw you. What did you do? I ran. Why? I don't know. You were standing there. Suddenly, I was very frightened. It's all right. You stay with me. Come on. Happy New Year. David, I, I've got to talk to him. Rocky? What? Like some ginger ale? Sure, just a minute. All right, see you on the tray. Okay. You should wait, dear. This is our New Year's toast. It ran over. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I wish Judy was here. Did you get your studying done? Not yet. Then you shouldn't have taken a walk. What walk? I've been in my bedroom ever since dinner. Oh, I thought you took a walk down to the gate. What would I do a dopey thing like that for? I don't know, I... Rocky, why don't you go back and do your studying tonight so we'll have the weekend free? Okay, Daddy. You heard him, and he wasn't lying. I know. What are we going to do? There's no one we can go to. They'd think we were out of our minds. Whatever it is, I have the feeling it's going to harm us. Claire, you have no way of knowing that. But you feel it too, don't you? I don't know why, Claire, but I, I feel that whatever it is has something to do with the work Webb and I have been doing. I'm going to call him because he's the only one who'd believe me. tomorrow it's Saturday I'd like you to come over really but I think it's better that you don't what's getting into you it's just that my folks will be talking about moving to Florida tomorrow and if they decide to I want to talk them into letting me stay here and go to USC why don't you let me help you I can tell your dad all about USC 
If you're going to be a science major... That's just it. If you're around here all day, they might get the idea that I'm not such a big disinterested scientist. Call me? Sure. Hey, you, Judy. Don't let Frank get away. I want to talk to him. I won't. Hi. Hi. Frank, I wonder if you'd do something for me tomorrow. Sure, Dr. Fielding. Will you come over in the morning and take Mrs. Fielding, Judy, and Rocky over to their Aunt Frances? What's the matter, Dad? Well, I've made arrangements for you to stay there for one or two nights, that's all. Well, I don't understand. Aren't you coming? Now, honey, don't worry about it. We'll talk about it later. Can you make it? Yes, sir. My pleasure. I'll be over in the morning. Thanks. Well, I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Night. Good night, Dr. Fielding. Good night, Frank. I think that's about all, Dr. Fielding. You're sure the boy wasn't drinking? You heard what my daughter said, and he looked quite all right to me. I know. It's just that he apparently wasn't speeding, and you say he knew the road. Doesn't seem any reason for a thing like this to happen. That's why they call them accidents. Never seems to be a reason. Still, we usually find one if we dig deep enough. Thank you, Doctor. I'm sure you want to get your daughter home. Are you well acquainted with the boy's family? As a matter of fact, I've never met them. Then we'll notify the parents. Thank you. Feel better now, dear? with your mother.
gave her a pill. She'll sleep through now. It's like a house of mirrors. What did you say when she told you? What could I say? Just kept agreeing with it. It's you and I, Rocky, and our Judy. Except this one attacked her. David, I'm glad you're home. Well, I'm not so sure I should be here. I'm sure. No. You're not only rich, you're pretty. David, maybe we ought to call the police. They were here tonight. Why didn't you tell them then? I know. They wouldn't believe me. They said I was overworked because of the project. You were upset because I'd been away so long as for Judy. And they had all the answers after the accident. I can't stand to think of the accident, that poor boy. Claire, do you suppose... What, David? <sighs> Nothing. Say, uh... We better get some sleep. And then I'm going to pack you and the children over to your Aunt Frances. But Webb's coming in on the 10.30 plane. We'll have to meet him. Webb can take a cab. I'm not letting you out of my sight until he gets here. That was Webb at the gate. He's on his way up. Wait a minute. I thought I called your mother. But he's my friend, too. <laughs> How are you, big fella? Fine, Uncle Webb. Hello, Claire. Good to see you. How much do we owe you? Oh, come on now. Dave, I'll take oh, care no, of it. no, Webb. We should have met you at the airport. Besides, you're not on an expense account. Real good to see you, Claire. Good of you to come. Where's Judy? I made her stay in bed today. Anything serious? Uh, if you'll excuse me. Oh, yes. Uh, here, that's all right. I'm supposed to sleep with this thing. They practically handcuffed it to my wrist. This is nice. Are you going with us, Uncle Webb? Oh, well, uh, I'm, I'm not sure, son. Webb, would you excuse me? I still have a lot of things to do. Uh, Aunt Frances is expecting us at 12.30, and that means on the dot. Sure. All packed, Rocky? Almost. Uh, I'll have time to show Webb around a bit. Oh, I'm expecting a call at noon your time. We'll be back by then. Well, don't go too far, in case your call comes in early so you can hear me. We won't. Come on, Rocky. Where'd they get my phone number? You gave it to me, and I gave it to them. Canaveral? Oh, Washington. 
They want you back Monday. Washington? What do they want? Well, they don't confide in old Webb yet. But I think you better look over these reports. Iron oxide on Mars. Well, we knew this Friday before I left. Yeah. Here. You better read the back page. Now, this is a report on the last 15 seconds of transmission by the robot, just before it was scrambled and went out. Now, here you see the regular signal. And this is where the interruption starts. Now, notice the increase in power. It reaches a peak here, and then subsides here, just before the transmission stopped. They're sure of this recurrent pattern? Well, that's what they think. The only thing they're really sure of is that when the signal should have been growing weaker, it became phenomenally strong and in a different form. Oh, I see. When they call, shall I tell them you'll be back on Monday? Oh, I don't know, Webb. I, I got to talk to Claire first. Well, at least you're talking. Sort of probation. <laughs> Children are getting bigger, and she's becoming worried whether she's going to spend the rest of her life as a space widow, and I can't blame her. Yeah, I guess it is a pretty common problem, all right. You know it is. May I want to show you something? Everything but a the handball court. Well, they got one down by the kennel. Claire got a piece of this action? No, her father was one of old man Wainwright's in-laws. All she inherited was some money. Look, don't knock it. Do not knock it. When she came out of the cabana, she said he was standing right there. Did you see him? We came back, but wasn't anyone here. She came from the far side and walked down toward the big house. Did you tell Claire? Not then. For a moment, I thought it was Claire. You see, when Claire had her experience, she didn't know what I'd seen from up here. And Judy, she didn't know about either of the experiences when she saw that girl in her room. What do you think? Well. All I know is what you tell me. If I didn't know you better, I'd think you were nuts. Sure you would. Anybody would. Oh, come on, Dave. Neither of us believe in the supernatural, but if you think this place is haunted, well, why don't we all just pack up and move out? Because I believe my eyes. And I think these apparitions, or whatever they are, have something to do with the kind of work you and I are doing. Now look, Dave. I mean it. There's a definite connection about our work at the Cape and what's happening here. Do you remember last Thursday when you were in my office and that call came in from Claire? Do you remember I couldn't answer the phone? The girl had to remind me? Do you know why I didn't answer? I couldn't. I was a complete blank for a moment. I felt like I was empty, like a shell. Oh, well, I'll buy that, but it doesn't prove anything. I had exactly that same feeling when I saw whatever it was I saw across the garden. Well, what about Claire? Well, she complained of feeling something, only she called it feeling faint. <sighs> well, even so, Dave, uh, what, what can you do? Well, you haven't got a shred of evidence you can even take to the police, let alone those hard heads at the Cape. Uh, well, they just say that you were having a breakdown because of overwork and that your wife was having a domestic yeah, trouble. Yeah, and Judy was upset because her boyfriend was killed. Right. I can't run away from it. it might be too important. Oh. Well, what do you plan on doing? The thing I saw went toward the big house. The other thing that followed Claire came from there. Now, as soon as Claire and the kids leave, I'm going down there. Because whatever it is, it's got to be in that house. Then you'll be over tonight? Sure, I'll call you. Promise? We'll be over. 
I can't stand his cooking. Well, there go the three smartest people in your family. If I didn't have to wait for this call, I'd talk you into going with them. While you're waiting, why don't I look the house over? When you get through, come on down. Well, if that's what you want. Well, what'll I tell him about coming back Monday? I don't know, Webb. Tell him I'll send him a wire. Oh, that'll go over like a lead balloon. All right, go on over to your haunted house. I'll be down as soon as I take the call. Mother, it must be working. Yes. Oh, Webb, it's you. There's something wrong with the gate. Would you please push the button up there? Okay. Pushing it. You, you want me to come down? No, thanks. We'll come back up. I'll have to call the maintenance man. going to be late. Isn't there another way out? Not with a car. Where's Dave? Oh, he, uh, he went down the main house. Alone? Well, I'm going to join him as soon as my call comes through. I wish you would, Webb. I don't like him down there by himself. If I'll call the maintenance man. No, well, it's like we're all prisoners. What is it? It's unearthly.
I can't offer you a drink, Dr. Billy. You're startled, I'm sure, but not completely surprised. What are you? I suppose you'd say an apparition. But I prefer a manifestation of intelligence. Whose intelligence? You have a theory on that, Doctor. You should have more confidence in yourself. I didn't want to believe it. I don't believe it. That doesn't alter the facts. There is life on Mars, Dr. Fielding. Oh, not as you know it here. Your organisms couldn't exist in our environment. Instead, we have intelligence in the abstract. Much like your electricity here. You can't weigh it or see it. But it can manifest itself just as you see me here manifested before you. Well, if this is true, uh, how did this intelligence reach Earth? You have a theory on that too, Doctor. That increase in the power of the signal from your robot just before we destroyed it. Your beam was transmitting our intelligence. An invasion? Oh, not at all. You invaded us. All we wish to do is protect ourselves. By attacking Earth? By stopping your attacks on us at the source. In this case, Doctor, your project. What good will that do? We're not the only country shooting for Mars. But you're the closest to success. The others will be taken care of when their time comes. How? Oh. They will be removed and replaced. Is that what you plan on doing with me? Removing and replacing me? Well, as you see, Doctor, you've already been replaced. <laughs> Why my family? I could fool your co-workers, your friends, but not your children. And certainly not your wife. Should we go upstairs, Dr. Since you came looking for me, I thought it only fair that you see everything. Why have you brought them here? You see, even you can't tell the difference. You can't harm me, Dr. Fielding. I don't believe you. You have the weapon. You may use it. Go ahead and use it, Dr. Fielding. It won't change anything. That was wise. We're not here out of vindictiveness. And why are you torturing us? Not torturing, observing. Even we can't imitate without first studying our subjects. When the time comes, we'll try to be what your people call humane.
What are you doing here? David, what's the matter? The front gate's jammed. Claire thought we ought to come down and get you. Dad, the gate's busted. Mom tried to call the maintenance man, but there's something wrong with the phone. You shouldn't have come down here alone, David. I was worried. <laughs> what's the matter with you? You look as though you'd seen it. Uh, what, what happened in there? Let's go back to the house. I'll tell you on the way up. It's almost impossible to think of intelligence existing without a brain. Yet, let's face it, the only organic brain we're familiar with couldn't exist on Mars. Extremes and temperature, lack of water and oxygen, energy. It has to exist as energy. When it came down on the beam, there was an increase in power. That's what makes it so frightening. How do you fight a thing like that? How do you destroy it? You can't. Not by any means we know of. Then what can we do? We can get out of here right now. But that may be the answer. Well, what other choice do we have? I, I mean to, to defeat it. Its source is on Mars. Therefore, it is cut off from its source. And if it's energy, I suppose the fundamental law applies. As energy, it can change its form, but it can neither be created or destroyed. Dave, wouldn't you settle for a change in form? I see what you mean. Make it work. Make it follow us. Try to break it up or dissipate it. Right. I think we ought to fly to the Cape and drop this whole problem right in their laps, whether they want to think we're crazy or not. If it isn't too late already, there may be a chance. Let's get going. But the gate's jammed. I can spring that lock with a pinch bar. Just get the children together. Webb, don't let him go down there alone. Don't you worry. Just get ready. You haven't even got your stuff together. No, Webb, I'll go down. But I'll go down. I'm very big with crowbars. You just throw some things in a suitcase. I'll be right back. All right. The keys are in the car. Don't take any chances. Don't you worry about me. You just be ready.
All aboard. Here we go. 